Hi, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to try and teach myself some new artistic skills by making a reproduction of a painting by a famous American artist called Georgia O'Keeffe. So Georgia O'Keeffe became very popular from about 1920 onwards. In that era she was painting mostly flower pictures and they were fantastic simplified abstract flowers very very beautiful very sensual actually but i'm not going to take one of her paint, uh, flower paintings from that period rather i'm going to try to reproduce one of her landscapes it's called pink moon over water georgia o'keeffe was an active and popular artist for nearly 70 years she first became known around about 1920. Many of her paintings, particularly her early ones, exhibit sensual curves and smooth body-like forms. The painting I've chosen is an abstract. Her painting, of course, would have been in oils, but mine will be in acrylics. O'Keeffe's original painting is a rather odd size, 44 by 51 centimetres. That's like a narrow landscape almost square. Unless I make my own canvas that's going to be hard to find and even harder to frame. But fortunately, like most artists, I have a collection of old frames that I've never had the heart to throw out. Ah, this one looks like a promising. Yeah, I'll go measure that. Uh, this uh, frame has uh, got its original keys uh, and it's a good sturdy frame. It's from uh, 1948 and I bought it in a local thrift store for 250 crowns, about $25. It's a fraction larger than O'Keeffe's original, uh, but I think it's going to do. I'm going to remove the original painting because that is oil based. Um, and I'll put a fresh canvas on the stretches. I don't think anybody's going to miss the original. The outer frame is particularly dirty. I'll clean that, rub it down and sandpaper it, uh, and then I will coat it, uh, it with an, an undercoat ready for uh, the finish. So I've covered the canvas uh, with a, uh, two coats of gesso and the last gesso had a little bit of burnt sienna in it. Uh, and the reason I added burnt sienna is because the overall painting with the acid greens and the, the blues, uh, whites, it's going to be a very cold painting. Um, I'm doing, uh, already doing my uh, pencil work here, trying to establish the basic forms. Uh, it's a very simple um, painting, but already I'm starting to get annoyed by certain um, things like the moon. Georgia, why did you put the moon so high? Uh, it's almost like on the edge of the, the very edge of the canvas. And I guess her answer is because it's an abstract and that's where I wanted it. But an amateur artist like me would probably bring the moon down and maybe a bit further over to the right for a more pleasing composition. But uh, by leaving the pink moon high up and just a little bit off center, O'Keeffe adds a lot of tension to the painting. You will also find uh, the hills themselves are quite cleverly arranged. Basically your eye will follow an S shape through the tops of the hills and off the bottom of the painting here in this kind of uh, uh, shape. Rather, rather a beautiful sinuous curve.
and I'm going to use this mainly uh, warm brown palette to uh, make an underpainting uh, just so I can see the, the, um, the tonal values of, of the painting. Her painting really only has two elements uh, which stand out and uh, that combine to make it a fantastic painting. The first is the composition. She uses a very simple lines uh, and structure. Everything is paired back to the raw essentials. Um, and this strong structure and composition really are 50% of what makes this a special painting. The other 50%, of course, are the colours and the contrasts that she uses in painting. But for now, we can see in the tonal study uh, much about the structure of the painting. I think it's very interesting. Uh, it doesn't look anything like a, a, a traditional O'Keeffe um, kind of painting, of course, because it's a landscape, and usually she was painting in a, uh, in a different style. But I notice that if I turn the painting up on its side, and maybe hide the moon there, you can straight away see the basic kinds of O'Keeffe forms that she's so good at. Uh, these wonderful curves that are organic in nature. Quite subtle, but beautifully done. In case you're wondering, I bought the frame along too. You can have a look, see how it looks inside that. Yeah, rather pleasing I think. Okay, now I'm going to start applying the colour. And the first thing I want to do is mix the pink of the moon. So I'm going to start with uh, some magenta uh, and some titanium white. Mix those together to get a nice pink. I'm going to add a smidgen of uh, process cyan to um, just slightly darken the colour. Just a smidgen. I'm going to add some pouring medium. That will help me loosen up the paint and make it flow easier. And I'm going to add one P of retarder. That's because I'm aware that during uh, this painting I'm going to be doing quite a lot of blending. Uh, so the retarder will help me keep the paint open and not, and not set um, for a few more minutes. That we need to make some uh, smooth transitions with the paint. I mix my acrylics in these uh, little sealable plastic pots. That means I can keep the acrylic paint moist for a couple of months uh, and reuse it as I see fit. Just mix this up and see what colours we get. Not so bad. A nice pink to start. In addition to the pink, I have mixed up uh, uh, a couple of um, greeny blues or bluey greens. Um, this one close to Viridian. And this one is a, a lighter version just with some white and, and a little bit more blue added. That's going to be for the hills. And for the sky, I have a cyan blue. And I will lighten and darken those colors accordingly with uh, some mixing white. Um, and also I've got Payne's Grey if I need to, to darken it, everything. I've finished my base layers now, the base four colours that I mixed up plus white. 
Uh, this gives me a sort of average uh, middle uh, value to work from. I will now make some of the darks darker, some of the lights lighter uh, to make the painting pop. I've reached a stage now where I'm happy with the colours uh, and I want to protect what I've got before I continue further. To do that I'm going to give uh, the whole painting a new a layer of acrylic uh, called an isolation layer. That's a clear transparent layer that sits above the paint uh, and prevents uh, scratches and uh, and marks and spillages and other things from affecting the painting. And to do that I'm going to use this. This is a, a pouring medium. So since the, the advent of the, uh, the pouring hobby, which uh, is very expensive with paint, uh, this uh, binder, it's an acrylic binder, has become uh, much more available and to buy the pouring version uh, is um, uh, quite uh, economical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a thin layer of this pouring medium to seal the painting and I'm going to use a, a soft brush which I reserve purely for uh, this kind of varnishing and uh, uh, isolation uh, layer uses. Now we get to right to the end and we have one problem left to solve and that is that the painting is glossy. That's because the isolation layer, the acrylic pouring uh, medium that we used, is a glossy medium. So we need to do one more thing which is to turn this into a matte finish. And the reason we'll do that is because Georgia O'Keeffe in this era in the early 20s almost all of her paintings were finished uh, with a matte finish, not a gloss finish. So that's what we're going to do right now. In case any of you are wondering about the frame, here it is. I've done it in a 12 karat gold finish. That's actually a mixture of gold paint and silver paint. Uh, struck in the right balance to give it this uh, light gold uh, appearance. Now apparently when uh, O'Keeffe first exhibited her paintings they were presented in what was called an OG frame. That's a sort of a frame with uh, curvy S-shapes uh, borders. So we're sort of close to that and also the finish was this uh, 12 karat gold. So I'm really happy with, the, with this and I think it's going to go well with the painting. Should we put everything together and see how it looks? So here's the finished painting hanging in the late autumn Swedish sun. I'm really happy with the way the frame goes with the rest of the painting. It brings the colours out, uh, it's a warm frame, but the overall picture is quite cold. The foreground also uh, has this uh, warmth coming through from the underpainting. The moon and its reflection in the sea are the main uh, geometrical elements. Beneath that the soft curves are very sensual you notice that the sea line, the, the horizon line, is very close under the moon. It's rather an odd kind of perspective. But somehow the whole painting is a very typical O'Keeffe. I've really enjoyed painting it. It's simple, it's elegant, it's stunning. <laughs>